What can a playing lesson do for a single figure handicaps game? Let's find out and let's do it now. That is great golf swing. Say that. Hi everyone, James Robinson here. If you're new to the channel, make sure you consider hitting that subscribe button. If you like course vlogs, if you like club tech reviews, if you like on-course teaching videos, just like the one I did with Liam, the high handicap playing lesson. Now we're with Charlie, the low handicap playing lesson. What do you guys think the difference is? Comment below, what difference would you see on the golf course, technique aside, from a high handicap to a low handicap? Let's see if we can start as we mean to go on and hold these putts. Okay everyone, now we're into the video. I'm gonna introduce you to Charlie. Charlie is a five handicap. Yeah, that's right. So Charlie's a five handicap, plays here at Huddersfield, also plays at Lightcliffe. Charlie, what would you say are your strengths and weaknesses of your golf game? Um, currently I'd say my strengths are my chipping and putting. Yeah. Obviously being a single figure golfer, it's important to you know be good at that. I'm currently struggling on my long irons, you know, I've always I've always you know found it quite tough. That's good so. cool, because we've got under 90 yard par three coming exactly, up. Exactly, yeah, so we're gonna just be interesting to see how we get on. So Okay, good lad. And yeah. what are your goals, aspirations? What do you want to achieve? Um definitely get down to scratch. That's my long term goal, because obviously, you know, it'd be great to scratch and I've played for a long time, so Okay, right. Definitely. Charlie does have his own YouTube channel. We're gonna talk you through that a little bit later on in the video, but it is Charlie Jaffrey Lifestyle. Go check it out if you haven't seen it before. He's new to the scene. But I'm sure he's going to cause a few shockwaves. Let's hit these tee shots. I'm going to hit four. Hit it, you in the four one? Yeah. What you got? Go on it four. I'm going to go four. You don't have to. Rule number one. I've just told Charlie I'm going to hit a four iron because of the wind and the yardage. So I asked him what he was going to hit. The answer? Same club. Same club. But why? Are you going to play the different shot? Have you picked out the same trajectory? Is it the same kind of yardage for you? These are all things which better players tend to rub off from each other, whereas sticking to your own yardages will obviously help you more. Let's carry on. You're not in a far one. What for you? See how I tried to get it lower, lower, lower. whereas if you hit a full four iron bullet, yeah, five, full it's back guard, isn't it? Yeah, to be fair, that's an error there, I should have changed, I should have stuck with the club because I'd hit a five anyway if I was on my own. So. Yeah. It's just because the wind though, because it's a quite a strong wind, wind in it. So. It's a great strike, leaking a tiny bit. So I'd like to apologise for a couple of things. First off, mine and Charlie's hair, it's quite windy, although I've not got the Alice band in, so <laughs> I've got a bit more of an excuse. And also the lighting on that one, we managed to find the only bit of shade, pretty much, on the golf course for that tee shot. Let's get down there and see where they are. I think we've both missed a green, actually. Charlie, just as... Oh, I've got him with the Alice band off. Yeah, get it off. Need to get the hair sorted out. Charlie, just as we're walking to this green, yeah. talk to me about your handicap history. How, did it rock it down, or did you find yourself steadily going down? No, it gradually went down. Um, obviously, I've always wanted to get down to single figure golf, and so ever since I started, I wanted to make sure, you know, that I work hard, train hard, put the hours in, and 
it's just gradually come down. It's not been a big jump, a big leap. Yeah. Something that's just slowly gone down. But you down. find you've plateaued a little bit at five, so that's the reason for the playing lesson to try and get yourself yeah. to that next level. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd, I'd like to think I'm off three or four, or maybe yeah. two, pushing on two. But again, it's just trying to you know put the hours in and hopefully you know tweak those little things to get right. Absolutely, good yeah. lad. So I did a little bit of work with Charlie in the winter last year. We looked at a few different things. We looked at compressing the golf ball better. We looked at keeping the club face square for longer. And it's definitely paid dividends for him. One thing that he lacks is a little bit of confidence. I'm looking at him, but he won't mind me saying that. If we can instill some confidence in him with a few different shots on the golf course, I think that'll get him down, not yet to scratch, but I think it'll get him down definitely from five, lower to the two and threes. Let's carry on. So what are you thinking here, Charlie? Okay. I get the case right. Yep. Um, obviously it's quite a, well, it's a bit of a slopey green, so I've got to think about it. It's maybe right to the left. But the main thing for me here is just to try and get the pace right. Yeah, okay. But, yeah, not too much of the line, just get it. Didn't quite work out there. <laughs> so, first thing to think about was pace right. Uh, no, pace was totally wrong there, I just misread that all, but misread the pace, should I say. Do you think you'd paid, because you were talking about the pace, yeah. but do you think you maybe thought too much about the slope and the brake on it? Yeah, probably, even though I was focused on the brake, as you say, I do feel like, you know, maybe I did play too much into the brake, which I do okay. sometimes do. So, first hole, not a great tee shot, left him on the right hand side of the green, better than my tee shot albeit, and then three putts. We spoke a lot about distance control with the putter, then it sort of let us down, didn't it? Yeah. So, what do you think happened in the first putt, should I say? The second putt wasn't a good putt, but it was definitely down to the first putt, wasn't it? Yeah. You can put your, you can put your band back on. <laughs> no, I'll keep it on, it's all right, I'm not sponsored by Nike. <laughs> Um, yeah, obviously the first putt let me down, it was pretty disappointing, but you know, for me, I get the pace wrong sometimes, and I do read quite a lot into the brakes. Yeah. So, did know, you take into account the downhill slope looking at it? Um, now that you said it, probably not as much, but I think with hindsight, I think that I was looking too much into the brake. Yeah, just have so, a just to go back where we were, if you got your putter as yeah, well and a ball. Yeah. And I want you to aim. And this can be a great point for people, picking points of aim rather than just thinking, oh, I'm going to go short and a little bit right. So, Charlie, I want you to aim at that tee peg there. So you can see that straight away, by visualising an object away from the hole, the stroke wasn't that much different, but how much better was the putt, Charlie? Perfect. Perfect, so that's a hole putt instead of a three putt, a two instead of a four. Let's get to the next tee. So while we're walking to the next tee, I just want to make a quick point that if you have seen my high handicap playing lesson, you'll note that green reading was part of the problem there as well. And by problem, I suppose problem is the wrong word, it's not a problem. It's part of the equation. The equation to reaching your goals, the equation to getting your handicap down, the equation to enjoying your golf more. Just because you are a high handicap or a low handicap doesn't necessarily mean you are going to be good at green reading. You are going to be good at putting, bunker shots, tee shots. You are your own handicap for a certain reason. You'll have your strengths, you'll have your weaknesses. That's why at the beginning of the lesson, the first thing I did with Charlie was ask him strengths and weaknesses. Let's get to that next tee. So one thing there which we discussed was shot shaping. 
Charlie's admitted to me that he's not very comfortable standing there saying, I'm going to aim at the left hand side of the fairway, peel it off, cut into the middle, or vice versa, aim at the right hand tree and let it draw back into the middle. For me, that's just something which, in my mind, sets me up for the shot correctly, puts me at ease a little bit, and helps me visualise the shot. How many of you guys at home visualise the shot before you hit it? Let's carry on. So, Charlie, while we've got a bit of time, my hair again. Mate, mine's worse as well. Do you mind? <laughs> so, Charlie, while we've got a little bit of time, yeah. talk to us about your YouTube channel. Yeah, hi guys, welcome. Uh, my name welcome. is. Welcome, it's my channel, eh? Well, no, but you know. Welcome. Get... Welcome, guys. <laughs> welcome. Um, yeah, I'm called Charlie Jaffrey Lifestyle. I'm, I'm not too sure on the, on the name just yet, but it's something that I'm working on. So, if you want to see more awesome content, obviously, just as good as James, then. That Just as good as it. <laughs> but, but what's the story behind it? Yeah, for me it's more like a vlog. So I'm hoping to. You know, Casey Nice style, yeah? Well, I would say. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm hoping just to give people a bit of insight about my life. Yeah. Um, I've got a few tips that I'm you know, hoping to do. Hairstyle, you know, a few golf ones, a few football ones. So yeah, check it out. Good lad. Awesome. Yeah. You heard it here first, guys. When Charlie gets to a million subscribers <laughs> and gets that gold play button, Make sure you were there first. Pretty good tee shots there. Charlie, we've got about 170 in. What are your thoughts? First of all, your thoughts on the tee shot, because we had to have a little bit of a discussion on the start line, didn't we? Yeah, obviously, I didn't really think about the wind too much, but obviously, you know, the fact that you pointed it out helped me a lot. Yeah. So if I was on my own, I'd probably aim that towards a tree, and it would probably be, you know, it'd have gone, it'd have gone out of bounds. So it'd have gone for right! Yeah, for right! <laughs> okay. So, you know, the fact that I took the wind into consideration helped the shot a lot more. Yeah. So knowing that the wind was off the left, off the yeah. tee, we've now come at a slightly different angle, haven't we? So what are you thinking about the wind for this shot? Um, again, really, I'm going to hopefully start it off left of the pin. Yeah. Um, you know, hopefully try to keep it a bit more penetrating this time. Okay. I do it quite high, so that's my next aim. That's right. Do. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. And let's do it now. Yeah, let's do it now. <laughs> 170, where are you right? 153. Alright. Into wind playing 170. Yeah. <laughs> just can six time. I'm gonna go over six time. Yeah. I usually go a shot, so that's an area that how much you usually do, but that is a great golf swing. Stay there. Yeah. Now if I'm being super critical there, Charlie's aimed left of the green. Where the trouble is, yes, the wind is off the left, but this is, this is something I see with a lot of low handicappers. You don't have to be attacking all the time. Choose your battles. Is it a great shot there? And he might have just missed the green left. So it's gonna be probably a par best case scenario. If he would have chosen that battle, aimed at the middle of the green, let the wind do what it does, then you hit the green, you've got a birdie put, and after that, if you clean up for your par, brilliant. If you don't, you move on. Thoughts? Yeah, happy with the shot, I struck it really well. Um, again, as you say, probably a little bit too aggressive, so with hindsight, I should have probably been on a bit more right because there's a bit more room to the right hand side. Good one. So you see, I'm actually going to go over the bunker on the right and just play a bit safer. Right, okay. Although the ball is above my feet, so yeah. that's probably determining that decision. Yeah. Yeah, nice shot. Beautiful from J.J. Robertson, golf player. <laughs> so another one for you there. Do you choose your battles? Do you go after the right flags or the wrong flags? Do you go after all the flags? This guy does. I do. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see Charlie down there. Missed it left. Quite a difficult shot. Not too bad, but you don't really want it, do you? Whereas. And in, in honesty, I'm going to say that Charlie put a better swing on it than me. It, it was a better contact, it was a better motion, and it was a better ball flight. Whereas I chose a different line, I went over the bunker on the right hand side, and I've got that. So make of it what you will, but I'd much rather have that than that. Come on, Charlie, make me my word, chip this in. Short games of strength, yeah? Yeah, of course it is. It's a hanging lie, though. That's a great effort. Awesome golf shot. Well done.
you can see there that distance control on putting may be something that we want to work on in the coming future if he's going to get the handicap down into the ones, twos, threes, maybe even down to scratch. Okay everyone, that rounds up part one of the low handicap playing lesson. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want to catch part two. You don't want to miss what's coming up. That's it from us. I'm James Robinson. That's been Charlie Jaffrey. If you've enjoyed that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you soon.